Hi there, I'm Nina with Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District. We're here at the Daniels Nature Center at Alpine Pond and Skyline Ridge Open Space Preserve. This is where we host the Spaces and Species Field Trip, a free field trip for students in the Bay Area all day long led by docents. It can be really special to plan a field trip to a place like this, but there's nature all around us, even where you are. Everything that we do today in this video, like walking, making observations, and asking questions are things that you can do near where you live. Consider taking a walk in your neighborhood to a nearby park or even observing birds and insects out your window. So today we'll practice some of the things that we do here on the field trip and we look forward to seeing you at a field trip here sometime soon. So some of the big questions that we ask while we're on our field trip is how can we find out what animals live here and what about this place makes it such a great home for animals? These are questions that we'll try to answer today during this video and that you can try to answer at home on your own field trip. At any point throughout the year, we can see evidence or clues of many different types of animals in and around Alpine Pond. This is part of the animal's habitat or home. A habitat provides four main things to an animal. Food, water, shelter, and space. When we see animals in and around the pond, we know that they're getting one or more of those needs met here. So let's explore some of these habitats right now. Take a look at this tree. What do you notice? You might notice that it's kind of white. It doesn't have many branches and no leaves on it. So you might be wondering if it's dead. But so what if it's dead? Dead trees can provide amazing habitat for so many living things, so we're going to take a closer look in just a moment. Sometimes on our field trips we can see some woodpeckers on this tree, and when we zoom in you might see some holes. Trees that are dead can be kind of like an all-in-one habitat for many organisms. It can be food, water, and shelter. You might be thinking, water on a dead tree? Moss can collect rain and fog, and many organisms will actually get their water source from that moss. So to answer our big questions, how can we find out more about what animals live here and what makes this place such a good habitat? We're gonna go and do some exploration and make some observations. In order to keep track, we're gonna take notes. So to help us prepare for a walk in the woods or a field trip around your neighborhood, it can be helpful to bring a paper or a notebook, something to write with, and even a camera if you have one. Scientists, naturalists, and nature lovers of all kinds record their observations and questions to learn more about their surroundings and help find out answers to their questions. When you're taking notes in nature, you can use pictures, words, and numbers to record your observations. You can use more of one of those things than the other, but try to use all three. 
The goal of taking nature notes is not to make a pretty picture. The goal is to record your observations and your ideas. While we were walking, we found some clues that animals had been in the area. We found some fur and what we think was poop. We decided to stop, make some observations, and take notes. I wonder what kind of evidence of wildlife you'll find in your neighborhood. So we came right down to the water's edge to see if we could find some evidence of wildlife and sure enough we have. These are some deer tracks and it's not hard to imagine that these deer might be coming through this area looking for a drink of water. This is one of the biggest bodies of water in this region so it makes sense that it would be attracting lots of wildlife that need water in order to survive. All living things need water to survive. While on your walk, look for sources of water, like sprinklers, water fountains, or puddles. You may find something to include in your nature notebook. So about a year ago, we were here with some kids on a field trip and during lunchtime, one of the students actually noticed something swimming around in the pond. We noticed the way it was swimming, that it had fur on it, that the fur was brown, and that it was swimming from one side of the pond over to the other side of the pond. The teacher and I were able to take some photos and video of the animal and we asked the question, what is it and what's it doing here? The same kind of questions that we're asking today. We brought those pictures and videos over to one of the Midpen biologists and she was able to confirm for us that it was in fact a muskrat. The muskrat had been seen about a year before that, but there were a lot of questions surrounding this muskrat because they're not very common in this area. So what was it doing here? How old was it? Was it healthy? What's it eating? With all of these questions, the biologists figured out some ways that we could try to answer those questions. And one way is to use some technology. So this right here is a wildlife camera. It is a motion sensor camera housed inside of a weatherproof box. And it stays out all the time and captures photos of things that move in front of it, like animals. And so we can use technology like this to help us answer the questions that we've been asking ourselves all day. The information that's gathered from wildlife cameras help out biologists and other scientists with lots of kinds of studies all over the world. So we just got back from our walk around Alpine Pond and we're now at the Daniels Nature Center. For such a short walk, only about a third of a mile, we actually saw a surprising amount of wildlife and evidence of wildlife. Sometimes we don't realize how much we've seen until we go back and review our notes, which is one of the reasons why it's so important to keep notes when we are making observations out in nature. So here's a list of all the wildlife and evidence of wildlife that we saw on just that short walk around the pond. And when we review our notes, we can see that we have some photos with some more detailed notes uh, and pictures that we drew to help us maybe identify some of these creatures later on or see if we have any other questions that might come up. We even noticed some animals and evidence of some animals getting what they need from their habitat while we were on this walk. We saw some 
deer prints near the water, indicating that perhaps the deer were drinking some of the water from the pond. We also saw some of the woodpecker habitat in that dead tree. And we even saw evidence of some insect somewhere having eaten a meal of that leaf that had been crunched up. Every time that we go outside is an opportunity to notice changes. We might see different animals or evidence of animals, and that might change depending on the time of year or the time of day. Every field trip that we have here at Alpine Pond is totally different. So get ready to take your nature notebook, your observations outside to check out wildlife and evidence of wildlife in your habitat, your neighborhood.